Okay, this is MXUX. I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can. This is a post asset purchase agreement joint venture agreement with Foxconn, Foxtron. This is by MXUX Studio. This is MXUX. Let's move on to the first slide here. Not good. Stock market down. It's fluctuating actually, but down the most since the great crash. Blah, blah, blah. Ukraine. Oil prices. Sanctions on um, Russian oil and gas. Fuel prices going nowhere but up. About $6 a gallon in the California area. Anyway, we all know what the macro environment is. This is uh, May 11, 22, or May 13, 22. Let's go to the BEV sector. Close in. BEV sector. The leader, Tesla, cannot sell enough vehicles. They're considering stopping taking orders. Okay. That is how popular it is. Now, if you just look at the difference between filling up an ICE engine, and turtle combustion engine, versus filling up a Tesla Model 3, let's say in the Los Angeles area, you're looking at for the ICE vehicle, $60. You're looking at for the uh, Tesla Model 3, about $12. So that's less than 25%, uh, 20%. It's 20% of the cost to operate a battery electric vehicle versus a nice vehicle. That's a savings of 80%. Okay. Then you got the BEV fleet market. Okay. Let's just talk about the fleet market in general. Absolutely have been starved for vehicles for the last two years. Are looking to over order. The biggest boom in fleet market demand maybe ever. Okay, and there can uh, the last survey I saw uh, said that they were going to go to 30% battery electric vehicles in their orders. 30% of new orders were going to be battery electric with savings now, and that's way before any of this macro environment happened. Savings now of 80%. I think we can look at as many as they can buy. That'll be the demand, unlimited for the battery electric fleet market. Then we have Lordstown Motors. Okay, Lordstown Motors is an asset light, battery electric vehicle manufacturer. They got a truck ready to go. It's a fleet vehicle. They got a contract manufacturer ready to build it. They can scale up or scale down demand, scale down production based on demand. They have no capex opex uh, no opex overhead they can control their costs because they pay a certain amount for each vehicle and they pay the bill of materials and a certain amount to produce it and that's it anyway i think lmc is in a fantastic position perhaps better than any of the other uh bv manufacturers because of the simplicity of the design of the endurance Okay, now we have the Google Maps view here. Now, we're, we're in a BEV fleet. Let's go a little deeper. Vans. Massive demand for vans. It's very hard to break out pickup truck demand from van demand. Van, vans are the are a very big segment of the, the fleet market. By the way, Lordstown Motors has a van. They have been planning it from the start. If you remember, Steve Burns was in a... Partnership with Lamotus of Camping World. They were going to build electric campers based on the Lordstown Motors high top van. This is before, of course, the shorters got involved to make sure that none of this happened. Uh, I don't know. Were they working for Ford? Were, were they working for the Auto Dealers Association? Were they working for a political interest? Good question. Anyway, so we've got a van loaded. In the revolver, ready to fire. We got, we, we're ready to do this. If we, we're just capital constrained as far as Lordstown Motors goes on vans. They have the design. They have the soft dies. They just need to do hard dies and some retooling. Then you got pickup trucks. Lordstown Motors has a pickup truck ready to manufacture and sell within probably weeks. Okay. Again, um, 
let's move on to the next slide here. Let's see where we're at with the pickup trucks. Now we got fleet pickup trucks. We got the bigger circle here, which is Ford Pro, and we got Lordstown Motors. Lordstown Motors is a little smaller because it's not in production yet. The Ford Pro, they are going to make 40,000 of them. They are selling them for $40,000. They are unlikely to make any money on any of them. They have limited production to 40000 They are no longer taking orders. Half of those trucks are going to fleet customers. That's 20,000 vehicles. Half of those trucks are going to consumers. So what's Lordstown's competition in the fleet pickup truck market? That's uh, 20,000 uh, Ford Pros. Whenever they can make them. I saw out of spec reviews doing a review of this Ford Pro. And this was supposed to be a production vehicle. First of all, it had torque steering issues, and it was very wallowy. And the guy said, well, this isn't as bad as the big Lariat with the big battery. So that's what you're looking at there. But the main thing was he looked at the VIN, and they said this was a you know, production model, 007, pre-production model. That's what they gave him to review. It's probably a specially prepared one at that. So I don't know where Ford is with their with their production, you know. Even with their van production, they say they produce 500 vans. It's hard to say. They aren't saying who they're getting delivered to. Uh, their regular ice pickup trucks are stacking up on a, on a racetrack in Tennessee right now because they can't get parts to finish them. It's questionable to me since the Ford... Lightning is based on the architecture of the F-150. If they can't build F-150s, how are they going to build Lightnings? Anyway, they've stopped taking orders. So that's Lordstown's competition. 20,000. 20,000 Ford Pros. That's it. Um, Cybertruck, not an issue. Not a, not a fleet vehicle. Um, the... Um, Scarage, nah, not a fleet vehicle. The GM, actually, not a fleet vehicle, not out for a year at least. So, that's the competition. 20,000 Ford Pros that are on order, that haven't been delivered yet. And the OEMs, you can watch my previous video on this. I mean, the buyers have already said, we're going to we're gonna consume, consider alternative surface sources for vehicles because we need vehicles so bad. That means Lordstown Motors. So, 20,000 undelivered Ford Pros is the only competition Lordstown is facing in the better electric fleet market. Now, let's take a closer look at Lordstown Motors. Now, this is Lordstown Motors. Um, I'm trying to do this kind of by their strengths, okay? Uh, their engineering is, I think, their main strength with the hub motors, with all the development, all the experience they have, the staff in-house, specifically bringing a battery electric vehicle to market. This is hard-fought experience. This is There are not a lot of people in the world that have the experience of this engineering staff. And they have a unique uh, technology as well that they know how to engineer. That's one of their main strengths. The other two main strengths is the product, the endurance, is a great fleet vehicle. It's a great consumer vehicle. The cost of production is going to be so much lower than these other vehicles when they get into mass production. The management is another strength of Lordstown Motors. The new management team we got in there are stellar. Stellar. And, you know, the other management team was excellent, and it got uh, Lordstown to where it needed to be. You know, one quarter is one year. One quarter is four years at Lordstown Motors. They just move beyond the startup phase. They're into the, you know, the production phase. They got professional management in there, you know, by evidence of doing this deal. Wow. Global player. Now. Now, here's the big elephant in the room is finance. Okay. Finance is the focus of Lordstown Motors right now because the only thing they have keeping them from making these trucks 
and selling them is capital. And that is what Hightower said on the last uh, public speaking he did on the on the quarterly call. The only constraint they have is capital. Okay, they've got everything else, all the ducks in a row. As far as the uh, component supply and so forth, you know, Foxconn is going to handle that. And this is the only vehicle they're doing. So that's going to get all their attention. And I think they're going to be able to source all the stuff that Lordstown needs to make this truck. Um, so one thing we have is this uh, MIH joint venture, which was entered to, into by Lordstown. I think people are misinterpreting this. We'll see on the call on the 19th. They're saying Lordstown got $45 million for this joint venture. Well, they split it. Lord Sun got 45% of a $100 million deal. That was $45 million. They have capitalized this joint venture with $100 million. That loan was, again, fronting Lordstown Motors money to, to purchase this interest in this business. Okay? I do not believe that is cash in hand for Lordstown. I think this is a bookkeeping entry and that, you know, Lordstown owes them this money. But it does give them a partnership a, in this asset, which could prove to be extremely valuable. As well, I have down here, arrow, big arrow with a dollar sign. This is where Lordstown Motors could generate operating capital. For example, the Fisker Orange is going to be built there. We don't know much about it. Will the MIH joint venture, will it be on an MIH platform? Probably. Will Lordstown engineer that? Probably. Will they get paid for that? Probably. Will they get a fee for each unit produced? Probably. When is that going to take place? Not at least until next year. But the fees may start flowing sooner than that. So this could be a source of capital for Lordstown. And obviously, Lordstown has made it very clear, well, they need $150 million. And let, well, we're going to go over that in a minute. They need to raise $150 million this year. Let's just go through the timeline here. This is basically today. We're still at PPV, just ready on the cusp of starting production. Start a commercial production sometime in the next three months, probably. The first delivery is going to take place in the fourth quarter, let's say 1222. Uh, by 123, or in that area, they expect to be ramping up, and they expect to have 500 units of the endurance in customers' hands delivered. By 1223, at the end of next year, they have 5,000 units planned for production. Now, parse constraints, materials constraints, so on. This is Foxconn's job to get these parts together. This is their only electric vehicle. This is their first effort. Are they going to focus everything they have on getting this truck built? Yes. Are they going to come up with the parts? I mean, if anybody can do it, Foxconn can do it. So are they going to reach 5,000 units? Yes. What did Hightower say? The only constraint they have on production, now that's 5,000 units. Their only competition is Ford with uh, 20,000 units. Okay, so they've already got a fourth of Ford, you know, they're already climbing up Ford's, uh, you know, what. So, but the thing, the important thing to say here is Hightower said, we are constrained by capital. That's it. The more capital they have, the more trucks they can make. The more capital they have, the quicker they can launch the van. The quicker they can do the hard tooling for the van, the, the quicker they can get that into fleet fleet manager's hands and the fleet bv for uh, ford fleet i did it there's another video on this i, I advise you all to look at my past 10 videos you can pick and choose it'll explain all of this but 5,000 units is the bottom end okay this is this could scale up phenomenally depending on the parts and the capital that lordstown raises now let's just go to the next slide now, this is, they need $150 million for 500 units of commercial production in 20, for 2022 and to 123. Okay? 
Now, this is for 500 units. I believe the start of commercial production, unit one to whatever the limited number would be, can happen with the present cash levels they have on hand. I do believe they could start production, who knows, 10 units, 20 units, 100 units. They have enough money to, to start production. We have no idea. Let's say five trucks. I believe without raising any money, they could make five commercial trucks and deliver them to customers. That is my personal opinion. Okay, we have a stock price right here today of 237. It's up after market to 240. It's going up and down. We've got a lot of institutional interest. Now we got Lordstown Motors. Now they got to they got to raise 150 million. How are they going to do it? Well, they got a couple. I don't know. They got three ways, in my opinion. Equity. They could dilute and do a public offering. And I think uh, as shareholders, we should expect that this is going to happen sooner or later. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. They could do a, a private offering to Foxconn. Foxconn already owns, I don't know, with the close of this deal, they have warrants to buy 10 million shares at $10 a share, ten seventy five a share. They have, uh, tell me they're not incentivized to get this truck into production with warrants at that level. Uh and they also have a number. They spent fifty million on shares. They bought another, I don't know, ten million shares when they bought when they initiated the asset purchase AIP. So Foxconn already owns, you know, I don't know, a couple million shares of uh, Lordstown. I'm sure this will come out in the stockholder meeting. Okay, but these are a couple of things that that could happen. You know, we have, you know, there can be a con consortium of joint venture firms that might want to take a private offering. Uh, there are institutional holders that might want to take a private offering. I don't think there's going to be any shortage of people that want to get in on this, in my opinion. Now, I have another source here. It's joint venture income. Is that coming? Other income. Uh, are we going to start making hub motors in, uh, for Aptera? Are we going to license some hub motor technology? Who knows? But the joint venture income, the um, uh, the fees for the Fisker Orange. Henry Fisker went to the factory yesterday. He's there. He's talking. You know, who he's meeting with he's meeting with Foxconn about the uh, about the manufacturing. He's meeting, in my opinion, no inside information, with Lordstown about the engineering because you know Fisker is just a design house. They don't do anything else. So I'm sure Lordstown's going to engineer that. Uh, Fisker's going to design the body, and Foxconn is going to build it, and that's going to take place next year. So is there going to be joint venture income? I think that's going to be coming. Now the third way is debt. Uh, they have YA, you know, the YA Associates. They have, I believe, three more tranches of debt uh, that they can get them to purchase stock. Uh, now it depends. There's a, uh, it's a complicated formula, but in any case, the higher the stock price, the more money they'll raise off YA. And this is already set up. This is already. I don't know what the exact numbers in. Again, I believe at the stockholders meeting they're going to go through this. There's a level of complexity here that I, I just don't have enough time to cover in this video, and I also do not have do not have enough time to um, research at this point in time. But there are minimum cash requirements, Lordstown. I am think, I'm not sure if they have to meet those as a condition of, I think it was a condition of the sale. I'm not sure. Anyway, there's a lot of things going on with the financial. That's why that finance bubble was so big in the Lordstown uh, description. Now, we got the YA tranche, okay? Now, this is what, this is what, uh, this is what Tesla did to Chamath. Chamath bought convertible bonds. Okay. Um, Foxconn could buy convertible bonds or Chamath could buy convertible bonds in this. And you could say, well, they don't have any assets to pledge against. Well, you know what? They have a 45% interest in that joint venture, which is an asset. They have their IP, which is an asset. They have their brand, which is an asset. They do have assets. OK, and I think that joint venture is going to end up being the most 
uh, valuable asset they own. And anybody with any vision into the future can see that. And I think convertible bonds are a, are a chance here as well. And, you know, at X years, they convert either to SOC, you know, and you set a strike price or a repayment. And I think we can get these at a low rate because Foxconn's involved. Foxconn's the biggest, one of the biggest country companies in the world. Okay. All right. Anyway, this is my view. I, again, I think they can get to the start of production without raising 150. In other words, if, if the investors are saying, well, show me and then I'll invest the money, I think Lordstown can do that. My opinion, not an engineer, not a lawyer, not a financial advisor. But if that, if it came down to crossing that line saying, look, you got to show me a production vehicle, you got to sell one, then I'm going to invest. I think Lordstown can do that with the cash on hand. I also think they're going to be able to raise the cash. Now, this is a thought exercise of where Foxconn is, their partner, Lordstown's partner, okay? And this is the latest information. Their last quarter earnings were great, but they are looking forward, and they're saying smartphone growth and demand are slowing, okay? They are reducing reliance on the smartphone sector. They basically put it on the back burner. They aren't even interested anymore. China is experiencing severe pandemic lockdowns, limiting production. They are over China, okay? Foxconn wants to diversify outside of China for this and also for the fact that the U.S. relations uh, with China are souring because vis-a-vis -vis the uh, view on uh, the Ukraine situation by China. So that Foxconn is out of smartphones, out of China. The CEO of Foxconn said, we want to pivot to BEV manufacturing at speed to ma capture market share. And you saw what the situation is with Ford and Lordstown for fleet pickups. Capture market share. That's what it's all about. Lordstown USA is the Hanhai headquarters for ba battery electric vehicle manufacturing. Do you understand this? World headquarters. This is their... This, this is... This is the focus point of all their efforts right now is Lordstown, okay? And this is a, one of the biggest companies in the world, okay? Han Hai does not know how to build better electric vehicles. So they want to pivot their headquarters in Lordstown. They got everything there, but they don't know how to build EVs, Okay. Lordstown Motors has retained expert engineering design capabilities in better electric vehicles. This is their expertise. This is why they exist. Okay? So, what does Honai need? What LMC got? LMC and Honai have entered into a JV to develop BEVs. What is their first BHV, BEV going to be on the MAH platform? Probably the pair. Will the pair have hub motors? Good chance. Is uh, Lordstown going to do the engineering and the electronic design? Most likely. Is Foxconn going to add the operating system for the car and the entertainment system for the car and build the car on a contract basis? Yeah. Is Fisker going to design the look and feel of the car? Yeah. I think that's how that's going to go. They're going to sell that for thirty-four grand. Can they make money on it? I don't know. But the point is, they're planning on making millions of them. It's a money-making deal for everybody. All right. Now, we go to the LMC Endurance is ready for start of commercial production and deliveries. As I said, I believe they can start production and deliver a limited number of trucks without even raising money. Okay. Right now, LMC, want, it's got, I mean, Foxconn has got all the focus on BEVs, all the focus is on Lordstown. Lordstown Motors is the only client for Hanai BEV manufacturing services. Okay. So... All of this is focused down into a small point of laser beam of light on the Lordstown Endurance. Okay? I expect LMC to raise $150 million. Okay? If you go through all these factors, they're going to raise, I think they're going to raise $150 million. I don't think it's going to be a problem. 
And I don't know that they're going to have to dilute stockholders. I'm not a finance guy. I'm actually bored by finance. But as Hightower said, production is only constrained by capital. The more money they have, the more trucks they can make, the more market share they can have, the more market share they can steal from Ford, the bigger of a player uh, Han High can become. This is a win-win for Lordstown and Han High. I think there's potential for an even larger capital raise if they can show their investors that they're not battery constrained. And I... Goshen, I have a video about rumors. You can look it up. I believe, I mean, the indications are Goshen is going to be their battery supplier. If so, they're not going to be battery constrained. So, you know, I think they can, number one, they can they can make get to the start of production without raising the money to show the investors. So I think they can raise the money. Number two, if they're not battery constrained, I bet they can even raise more money. Okay? In any case, what's the outcome of all this? Sorry, guys. Short Apple. I mean, this thought exercise says, short Apple. Go long ride. Ride is the pivot point for Hon Hai to get into battery electric vehicles. So, this exercise says, go long ride. And uh, through deduction, you can say, expect the Apple car at Lordstown. Because not only does Hanai want to get out of uh, smartphones, so does Apple. So that's my call. Yeah, I am bullish. And uh, not a financial advisor. This is not a financial advice. Lordstown Motors is a high-risk investment. Do your own DD. Catastrophic losses can result. My thought exercise comes to this conclusion. And that's, you know, I don't know, guys. I've been following this for a while. This would be my, at this date of May 13th, this is my evaluation of the situation. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found that useful. This is MXUX. I'm uh, going to be signing off now. Good luck in the market, and thanks for watching the video.